<clears throat> no, Lily. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh. oh, hello, everybody. Oh, how are you? My doggy got one of my little Christmas decorations. No, no, no. That's a no, no. Okay. Check out my my little deer pillow. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Got this at Target for five bucks. Oh, you know what? I need to get this off of her real quick, guys. There. Now you won't be overheated. She has to wear it at night or she gets cold because she's skinny and has no fur. <laughs> but anyway, okay, you're going to have to get down. <laughs> anyway, guys, I just took a shower and feel fantastic. Oh, and I put on these PJs that my daughter got me because at Halloween we always exchange gifts for uh, fall and Halloween and stuff. And this was one of her gifts, and they are so soft, guys. It's like the softest velvet humanly possible to be made inside and out, not just the outside. Inside feels amazing against the skin. I'm in heaven right now, and I'm going to be in these all day. As you can see around me, if you've watched my other videos recently, all my fall stuff is gone that I had on the wall, that I had in the tree, that I had all over the house. Yesterday, right after Thanksgiving, it was like, fall is done, I'm through. So, yeah, it's all packed up and put in the garage. <laughs> so, now I'm contemplating how much Christmas stuff I want to put out. I have two totes, and I'm part of me wants to, part of me doesn't, because it's work to put it up, work to take it down. But I'm starting to feel a little more like I want to do it. So, I think I'm going to do it right this time, not do it all at once. Like I tend to always want to do, I want to get it done right then and there. I might spread it, spread it over two or three days and just put a little up there, a little bit there, so it's not so overwhelming. So anyway, that's my dilemma right now. <laughs> but anyway, guys, I wanted to make this video because of something that I witnessed at Target. Um, there was a mother and her daughter, and they the mother stopped... To look at the baby stuff and I just happened to stop too because I love to look at the baby stuff I'm not gonna have any more baby grandchildren but they started arguing the dot the mother was like I just wish you would have a baby I wish you'd have a baby so bad I want to be a grandmother and the daughter was like mom I don't want kids I told you I don't want kids and they kept going back and forth and I thought, oh, that is so unfair to do to the daughter. And I get that the mother wants grandchildren. I get it because I love mine. But if my children had said they're not going to have grandchildren or they're not going to have children, um, I would have just had to accept it and enjoyed my kids. I, I couldn't do what she was doing. She was really pushing her daughter. And I'm here to talk about whether or not, you know, having kids is a thing to do for some of you. Um, and I'm here to be honest about it. I'm not here to sugarcoat it and be the cliche, Oh, children are just wonderful. It's perfect. It's fabulous. There's a lot to having ch children besides the good part of it. And that's why I wanted to talk about it. Um, for me personally, um, I will say the cliche, I can't imagine my life without my kids. I can't. But from the time I was 14, I knew I wanted to be a mother. When I first held my my parents first grandchild my nephew Mario when I held him when he was a baby I looked at him and I thought this is what I want I want this well I went on to have five kids and I'm here to talk about the hard part of having kids because we all know the joyful part but a lot of people don't want to be honest about the hard part because they think it's going to make them look like a bad parent or something no it's the reality of having children and a lot of people do not want that and you can't hold it against them. You can't think of them as being terrible people. I even know someone who said that people who don't produce grandchildren are selfish and I thought that was terrible. I thought that's a heck of a way to think about your kids if they decide not to have kids. But that's that person's view. But um, you know, you if you're going to have kids 
you have to be prepared for everything. There are a lot of hardships that go along with having children. It's not all just, oh, they're so cute and precious. There's a lot that goes along with it. As a woman, I hated being pregnant. I'm here to be honest. I hated being pregnant. I was sick with, you know, morning sickness and the aches and the pains and the swelling up and and my food taste changed where I could smell something and it would make me sick. Oh my gosh, I did not like being pregnant. The discomfort of the pregnancy was a lot for me. It was an awful lot. And even with my last child, my fifth one, I almost hemorrhaged to death after having him. So there's a lot uh, in terms of what the woman goes through. You know, your feet swelling up to balloon size, you know, and you just, you just, for me personally, it was not a pleasant experience. I did not like being pregnant. I did love having my babies. No, I didn't like the birth. No, I'm not here to say, oh, it was such a wonderful experience. No, that kind of pain was horrendous. That was the most horrendous pain on the planet. I remember with my first one, <clears throat> I was in labor for over 26 hours with no medication. I had him in Germany, and it was military, and they didn't give me anything. It was till finally they gave me one little shot of Benadryl, which did nothing. It might as well have given me an aspirin. But yeah, it was, the births were extremely painful. The only one that wasn't painful was my last one because I threatened the hospital and told them if they don't give me an epidural, I'm going to sue them. And they gave me an epidural. And it was a painless, it was pretty much a painless birth. I mean, I delivered him 30 minutes after I got the epidural. The others were over 20 hours with all of them of labor. So that was a painless birth, but came the, um, you know, the, the hemorrhaging, which was terrifying. But the birth, no, I'm not going to sit here. You know, I've, I've read some stories of women, oh, it was so incredible being there as my child was born. Yes, it's incredible when your child is born. But the process for me was so painful that it was like horrendous. It was horrendous pain. And that's another thing you have to be prepared to to want to be willing to go through. It can be a quick one or it can be hours, it can be days of being in labor and it's a horrible pain. So there are women out there who are saying, you know what, I don't want to go through all that. And then comes the part of the children. Let's talk about the part that's not all sunshine and roses and lollipops, you know. <laughs> I'm being honest with you guys because there are a lot of reasons that people don't want to have kids. You have to be prepared to have many sleepless nights when they're babies. You have to be prepared for sleepless nights even when they're toddlers and older, a little older, because they get scared of certain things. It wakes you up during the night. Uh, they wake up crack of dawn. Uh, and when they wake up, they're awake. There's no hanging out in the bed with them. They're like, I want up. I want to go eat. You know, when they're, when they're a little like, like my little grandson, Jack, he's five. He woke up at seven the other morning. He spent the night here um, the other night. And <laughs> seven o'clock, he comes in, hi, Grandma. And I, I'm already awake, thankfully. And he's like, I'm hungry. And he laid in bed with me for about two minutes. And then he was like, I'm hungry, Grandma. Got to go eat. Well, I mean, 7.10, we were out there in the kitchen. I'm feeding him. And that would be your everyday life. There's no sleeping in. There's no just taking it easy on a Saturday morning after if you work or whatever, if you work outside the home. And even if you're a stay-at-home mom or dad, for that matter, um, there's none of that sleeping in stuff. <laughs> and then you have to think about having to get a babysitter. If you're going to go somewhere or want to do something, you have to find somebody to watch your children. You can't just leave them alone at home when they're little. So you've got to find somebody to take care of your kids. So you kind of have to work around all that. Then comes them going to school. You have to be prepared for all of that. Having to deal with getting them ready for school. Getting them out the door. Whether you take them or you take them to the bus for, for the bus to take them. you got to get up, make breakfast, get them all ready. Then when they get home from school, you got to make sure they get their homework done. you got to get dinner going because they're going to be hungry. You got to, they're usually hungry after school for a snack. You got to have that. 
Um, I mean, it's a never-ending process when you have kids. It, there's always something. You got to be prepared to rush them to the emergency at two o'clock in the morning when they wake up screaming with a horrible earache or they're just vomiting uncontrollably. Uncontrollably have a high fever. You got to be able to rush them into the hospital at any time, day or evening or night. That's the reality of children, because they and then they have injuries. They fall and they have an injury, and you have to rush them in because they gash something open or. Who knows, broke a bone, who knows what happens when they fall and you got to rush them in. So your life literally revolves around the children. It truly does revolve around your children. Making sure they're safe, making sure they're healthy, making sure they eat well, making sure they have a decent place to live, you know, it's a, it's a non-stop thing. And then even as they get older, then you have the hardship years of teen years. Oh my lord, the teenage years. Woo! I don't know how I got through five of them. I really, I sit here and I think, how did I do it? How did I get through five teenagers? It was not an easy thing. It was tough. With they, they get their, their mindset. They decide they're going to do whatever. They decide uh, to test you. And then you have all that business of them coming home later than they're supposed to. You're worried to death. That's the other thing. You never stop worrying about your kids when they're out and about. You're, you you worry and you give them a curfew, you know, you got to be in by whatever time. Well, they don't show up at the t that time. Then you're thinking, oh my God, did something happen? Do they have an accident? Are they okay? You go through all this process. That's a normal, that's the normal part of having children. And a lot of people don't want to go through all that. They just want a peaceful adult life. They just want to be able to live their life how they want, as free as they want, and you cannot blame them for that because that's that's their mindset. And you have to be you have to want to have children in order to enjoy them despite all the hardships. You know what I'm saying? You have to truly want them. You you know, there are people out there, women out there who get pregnant accidentally and they never wanted that kid and they're not happy. And that's sad because it, because it reflects on the kids. You know, it makes the kids feel bad that, you know, mom and dad aren't thrilled to have them. They sense these things. They know. They're not stupid. The kids sense a lot of things. And um, and when that happens, I think it's really a sad situation. Because when you really want the kids, you really want to have children, all the hardships you go through are worth it. They're truly worth it. But if you're scared, if you don't want to go through all that it requires to be a parent, then don't do it. Don't let anyone talk you into it. If in your heart, um, you're, you're, if in your heart you truly don't want kids, I mean, you're really thinking, I don't want them, I don't want to deal with all of that, I don't want to be tied down, I don't want any of it, don't let anybody guilt you into having them because then you're going to be miserable, which will hurt your child. Don't do that. Now, I know there are a lot of people who will say, well, I didn't want kids, but then once I had one, oh my God, I couldn't believe I didn't have them sooner, which is true. A lot of people go through that. They're like, I really didn't want kids, but then once I had my first baby, I was in love. I was beyond in love, which is what babies do. You see that precious little baby and you're like, I can't believe I made this. I can't believe I made this. This is incredible. And you do fall in love with your child. I mean, you fall in love with them. But there are people out there who don't. They have that baby, and to them it's an extreme hardship. We hear the stories all the time on the news of kids that are neglected or abused or whatever because they're not wanted by that parent or those parents. They're not wanted. And the sick parents don't treat them well, and they literally abuse and hurt their children because they truly didn't want them. So if you're one of those people that truly don't want them, do not have them. Don't don't do that to a child. Don't don't um don't um put a child excuse me, I need the chapstick. Don't put a child through the hardship of your not wanting children. That's not fair. It's just not fair. Um but if you're on the fence as to whether or not you want to have kids, that's why I made this video, is 
because some of you are on the fence because you don't really want them but you've got family members or whoever or even friends oh how can you not have kids you know that's crazy blah 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 and you're thinking well maybe I should you know whatever it, like I say if in your heart you don't want them do not have them live your life the way you want to live them I can't imagine my life without my kids I truly can't I, I and my grandkids I, I just I honestly can't but then again I had my first child at 19 I got married at 18 a year later I got pregnant so I've never known adult life without children ever that, I mean that's that's the facts. I had my first child two uh two what yeah two almost two full months well no it was over two months before my uh twentieth birthday. So I was nineteen when I had him. So I've never known adult life without children. So in my case I can't picture life without children. Those of you who are in your twenties or maybe early thirties or even mid thirties and you still haven't had kids well, that's a long part of life to be without being tied down by children. So to you, it is a big dilemma. It's like, oh my God, do I want to do this? I've had all this freedom all these years. That's the difference between me and others like me who had our children young. It's hard to picture life without them. And despite all the hardships, and there were many guys from the time they're you're pregnant to the time they're they're ready to leave home and even after they leave home issues come up then you're dealing with an adult um, who, who is living their way wants to do things their way you're thinking gosh I wish it was this way you have all these thoughts going on guys anybody out there who has adult children you know what I'm talking about sometimes they do things and you're like oh my god if only I could tell them don't do that or whatever but you don't except on a rare occasion because it can it can raise uh, some problems it can raise problems you kind of have to let them live their life you can make a suggestion if they're talking to you about something but you can't just say well now you go and do this or else <laughs> you know because they're going to do what they want to do as adults but between birth and the time they leave home guys it is a lot that you go through and you have to want to do that. That's the key here. You have to want to have children in order to enjoy them, despite the hard things that come up. And there are many. And the worry. You worry constantly about your children. You miss them if you're not around them. You go through all this stuff. I was a stay-at-home with, uh, with my children. My first one, I got divorced, and I was a single mom for five years, then got married, and then I was a stay-at-home mom for 22 years. And I am so glad I got to be at home with them because I wouldn't have wanted to miss all of their growing up for all the career and money in the world. Nothing was more important to me than being with my kids. No career, no having tons of money, no having a great big old house. None of that was important to me. But I was lucky that my then husband made a good living and we were able to live in decent homes. Want some of them were very nice, very nice, and um, I felt very fortunate that I was able to do that. I was able to be home with them because to me that was the most important thing. I didn't have dreams of career and making tons of money or whatever. My dream was to be at home with my kids, to always be with them, and that's how my daughter is now. She doesn't have to work outside the home at this point, and she's been home with her kids for years her three kids and I'm so glad because boy had had their times come up when they're sick for days when one gets sick the other one gets sick the next one gets sick it one one illness can last weeks because it goes through through them all and luckily she doesn't have to worry about oh my god I have to get to work oh my god I'm gonna miss all these days oh she doesn't have all that she's there for the kids and I'm so grateful that her husband works as hard as he does to take care of the family and she's able to be with them. Well that's what my life was. I was a stay-at-home mom and yeah there were a lot of hardships you know when they're sick like when all five of them got the chicken pox. Oh man you talk about a rough life. I literally broke down one day. They were all crying. They were all feverish. They had the chicken pox. You name it or all four of them. The oldest one had already had them. The, all four of them had it. And 
vomiting, just as they were sick as dogs. I literally dropped on the living room floor and just bent over and cried and cried and cried and cried. I was beyond exhausted from tending to all four of them at once. That's part of having children. That's, that's part of it. But I was glad I was the one there taking care of them while they were sick, even though it, even though it brought me to tears on the floor, literally dropped to the floor like I'm standing up, and it was like drop, <laughs> and I just started crying. It was I was so exhausted from them being up all night and feverish and feeling sick and having diarrhea and vomiting. Oh, they were just so sick from those chicken pox, but. I, despite that, after it was all over, I was so glad I was there for them. You have to want to go through all that. You have to want to be able to get through it sanely <laughs> and come out of it being glad that you were there for them. <coughs> you have to. So if you're on the fence about having kids, there's a lot to weigh. There's an awful lot to weigh. Especially if you've gone without kids, say you're, let's say you're 30. 32, 33, you haven't had kids, and you're hearing people, you know, your parents or family or friends or whoever, and they're telling you, you should have before it's too late, you know, you get to a certain point, you can't have kids, don't even let that push you into it. Yes, think about it, because if you're on the fence, like, I don't know if I do, I don't know if I don't, think about it. Think about everything you have to go through before you put yourself through that, because as you get older, then raising those children are harder. When we're young, it's a whole different thing. Like I had my last one at 35, and that pregnancy was living hell. I had that severe form of morning sickness to where I was in bed all day, every day, with a pan on the side of the bed because even the smell of food would make me want to throw up. My then husband would have to block the door to the bedroom with towels. He put it at the bottom so the smell of him cooking food wouldn't come into the bedroom. It was so bad. I could not eat. Had to go to the hospital to get an IV because I could not eat. And I was worried to death that it was going to affect my baby, which thank goodness it didn't. He turned out perfectly healthy child, very smart kid. He's a brilliant kid. And I thought my not being able to eat for weeks was going to affect him. Thank goodness it didn't. But that was one of the hardships. So the older you are to have those children, yes, it can be hard, harder on you physically. And the fact that I hemorrhaged when I had, right after I had him, the doctors told me, well, it's because, number one, you're older and it is your fifth child. So I was lucky that they were able to save me. They said it was literally about five, ten minutes before I would have bled out. And they were able to save me. So, yeah, there's a lot. You have to think of that, too. Will the pregnancy go well? You have to think of what if you were to miscarry. You have to think about what if something is wrong with the child. Let's say the child, I hate to use the word wrong, but you know what I mean. Say the child has some disabilities or problems, health problems, that you might be stuck with to take care of for the rest of your life. And then you worry, well, what will happen to that child when I'm no longer here? There's a lot that goes into having children. It's not just having this cute, this cute pudgy little baby that you hold, but isn't it precious? There's a lot that goes into the thought of having children. There are a lot of things that can happen. And I'm not trying to make this sound like just, you know, there will be people say, oh my God, you're so negative, because they're always out there, those keyboard warriors. <clears throat> no, I'm not being negative. I'm talking about the reality of having children. It's not just getting pregnant and having this cute baby. There's a lot that goes into being a parent and what could happen. I was willing to risk that with each baby. Even with my fifth one, because of my age, being 35, they wanted to give me an amniocentesis test to see if he was normal or if he had Downs or any other disease because or ill or disability, whatever, because of my age. And I said, no, whatever I'm given is what I get. And the doctor was like, are you sure? You, you can find out now and then decide what to do. I said, no, regardless of what I get, I, that's my baby in there. Nobody's going to touch him or <clears throat> hurt him with that test. Because that cannot, that, the amniocentesis that they used to do with the needle going in, <clears throat> in your belly, I didn't know if they, I don't even know if they still do that. But 
uh, it could cause preterm labor. And I was like, nope, whatever this baby is, it's what I get. And luckily, my fifth and last one was a very beautiful, healthy child. So yeah, I'm not trying to be Miss Negative Nancy here. I'm just trying to, to after hearing that conversation, it upset me um, to know that that mother was pushing, was trying to push that daughter so badly. And she came right out and said, no, mom, I don't want kids. I just don't want them. And the mother was, oh, but look how cute these little clothes are in Target. Aren't these, darling? As if that's all there is to having children is buying cute clothes. No, there's a heck of a lot more. And if you want to be child free for the rest of your life, well then more power to you. More power to you. It's your life. It's not your parents' life. It's not your friends and family's life. It is your life. And if you want to be free from all of that, then that's your choice and you should do it. Now if you want to have kids, you must be prepared for all that it entails. It's not just, like I said, it's not just having this cute baby and adoring it when you take it home. It's a lot of hard work. It's exhaustion. It's frustration. It's anger. It's fear. It's worry. It's everything rolled into one all the time from the time they're born till the time they leave home. And even after they leave home, you think I don't worry about my kids if they get sick or or they get into an accident or whatever, or, or their relationships fail and they're sad and heartbroken. I still, as a mother, worry about my kids. I even tell, like my son, who drives home alone when he comes over here, I tell him, call me or text me and let me know you get home. Because he lives about 30, 35 minutes away, I want to know he got home safely, just for my own whatever. And he'll, he'll text me, I'm home. And that gives me relief. And it's just, it, it never ends. To be honest with you, once you're a parent, you never stop worrying to some degree. There are some that are super worriers, what is what I used to be, super worrier, to where I'd actually get myself almost sick worrying. Now I'm just that little worry of like, did you get home safe? Good, okay. Are the kids all right? Have their fevers gone down about my grandkids or the or my kids? Are you feeling better? I communicate. I'm I'm on the lower end of the worry now, but it's still there. So you have to decide if you want this to be what your life is the rest of your life because you never, like my mother once said, you never stop worrying about your kids till the day you die. <coughs> and that's the truth. You never do. There's always something, <coughs> excuse me, no matter how minor or how big, there's something. It, there's always something. So having kids is not just a pleasure ride of sunshine and roses and, you know, lollipops and candy and fun and cute things. It's a lot of hard, hard work. Being a parent is extremely hard work. I don't know how I got through it. I really don't. With five. And three of them, my middle three kids, I was, my daughter was nine month pre months old when I got pregnant with my son, Josh. And when he was a year old, I got pregnant with my son, Elliot. Three babies. I had three little ones at once. And then five years after the last one, or after the third, fourth one, then five years later, I had my fifth one. So I had kids ranging from teenagers to newborn. So, yeah, you got to decide if that's what you want to do. So anyway, guys, just wanted to make this video. Don't let anybody pressure you if you don't want them. If you do want them, then enjoy them and don't let any pressure one press you not to have them because there are people who say, oh, you don't want to have them. Don't even bother. It's too much. If you want them, you have them. If you don't want them, don't have them, guys. Okay? So, just wanted to make this video on this Saturday morning in my fuzzy warm PJs I'll be in all day. <laughs> so, say goodbye, my Lily. She always has to join in. This, this might cut off when I'm talking, but that's okay. I'm at the end of the video. Say, say bye. Mm. This is my Lily. Now I got to decide if I want to put a de Christmas decor. I think I'll wait till tomorrow. <laughs> After I got over putting all the fall stuff away, I think I need a little break. <laughs> so anyway, guys, I hope you're going to have a Merry Christmas season. Enjoy it the way you want to. Anyway, I will talk to you in my next video and enjoy having kids or not having kids. It's your choice. Don't let even your husband or your wife convince you that you're going to have kids. you got, got to talk about that before you ever get married or partner up with somebody too. Be sure you talk about that. Because if you don't want them and your partner does or your wife, husband, whatever, 
that can create problems. So make sure you take care of that before you end up together. So talk to you later, guys. Have a good one. Have a good week.